Hey guys, so if you're new here or if you're not, if you want to hear me voice act, head over to our main channel, links down below. And if you don't, this channel's solely for TTS. Um, if you want to know all the details about what's going on, we have a stream up that you can go and watch, but let's just get into the video. Death Corpse of Krieg. Animals flee this hell, the hardest stones cannot bear it for long, only men endure. In life, war. In death, peace. In life, shame. In death, atonement. The death corpse of Krieg, the most grimdark of grimdark. The death corpse of Krieg is a series of Imperial Guard regiments which hail from the death world of Krieg. They like trenches and gas masks and are known for their iron discipline and suicidal tolerance for casualties. In fact, they will take any objective and vanquish any enemy, just as long as they have enough men to throw in the meat grinder. Hell. Krieg means war in German, as you have gathered, the Imperium does not do subtle. That's how bad as they are. What's the difference between them and other guard units, you ask? These motherfuckers don't even give a shit. They're some sort of bad as human lemmings, and they are so grimdark that they alone are responsible for about 20% of the grimdarkness in Warhammer 40,000. They have no will to live, no fucks to give, and one hell of a lot of Xenos to shiv with sharpened entrenching tools. This is said to be a relic of the tragic civil war on the original hive world of Krieg, a den of traitors, corruption and strife where rebels rose to power and seceded from the Imperium. However, loyalists guardsmen decided to light Krieg up like it was nuclear 4th of July instead of letting the heretical rebels take control of the planet, resulting in their home world becoming a bitch of a radioactive hellhole, hence the corpse gas mask fetish. Now the people of Krieg are so sad about their rebellious past they'd literally rather die than continue living their shameful lives. The greatest source of mundane horror in all of Warhammer, the Death Corpse does not need eldritch nonsense or nonsensical alien biology for the darkness factor. This is quite simply humanity at its worst and nothing more. Due to them just being so damn cool, they are often a popular choice in the community, especially in regards to memes. This tarnish is their overall I am willing to die for even a chance at forgiveness to the godawful shovel where a boo memes we all know and despise. Also it needs to be said that in current non-jokey 40k canon there is an in-universe romance novel about Krieger's titled My wish to generate children with you is only exceeded by my devotion to him. If you think about it, the death corpse suicidal nut jobs are better equipped than most guardsmen. They have flak armor like any other, but they have plasteel helmets. Their last guns are much more powerful, albeit at the cost of shots per power pack. Their bayonet skill is outright legendary. Their uniform is fully sealed against nuclear, biological, and chemical attack, also protecting them from the mud, rain, and other elements and likely acting as an any environment survival suit to shoot to the guard, and they have a backpack full of gear and supplies instead of rushing into battle practically, or literally, naked. Heck. These suicidal guys even have grenadiers wearing carapace armor wielding helguns despite being sent specifically to get killed doing something useful. Their tank regiments include heavy tank companies and super heavy tanks, like the Mordian Iron Guard, come to think of it. They also have wire a more artillery and heavy weapons than anyone else. They make the Cadians look under equipped and poorly trained. Perhaps maddest of all, is that law wise Kriegers are kinda the new kids on the block. Background. The Civil War. Some time ago Krieg was a pretty sweet planet to live on, until the heretical dickwood of a planetary governor, and most of the ruling elite, decided that the tithe was whack and voted to detach from the Imperium. Needless to say the loyal citizens wouldn't let the rebel scum get away with that and a bloody civil war broke out. The loyalists were severely outnumbered, and only managed to seize control of a single hive called Farragut. Faro is Italian for iron and grad is old Slavic for town. GW being subtle, due to the fact that a loyal Krieg Imperial Guard regiment under the command of a Colonel Jerting was there, waiting to depart. While getting some turnips out of the basement Jerting tripped over some nukes and decided to even the odds by blowing the world back to the Stone Age. Afterwards, after just 500 years of continual terrible war, the loyalists managed to drag Krieg back into the paralyzed lap of the Emperor. 
Today the citizens of Creek celebrate the day their hero Colonel Jerting destroyed their planet's ecosystem on Jerting Day, when everybody digs out entrenchments and practices NBC weapons drills, just like every other day, though everyone gets one crumbly chocolate chip cookie. The Death Corpse. The inhabitants of Krieg are mad sorry for their disgraceful past and try to make up for it by being the baddest motherfuckers since the Emperor himself. In fact they've been so successful in producing hardest guardsmen that the Adeptus Mechanicus Biologist gave them some Vitae wombs, IVF clone tubes, so that they can produce even more top-notch cannon fodder, which is important, because Krieg is a radioactive shithole, and most of them are sterile. So sterile that most Kriegers are born of complex gene cloning and subsequent growth vats. Their society is absolutely militarized. Children are being born only to be filled with the guilt of their ancestors, trained and sent to die for their emperor. Contrary to other less brainwashed loyal units they are truly happy to do so and would die with a smile on their lips for the glory of the emperor, if they'd ever smile. Seriously, those guys are stone cold. You'd rather chat with a Necrom than a Krieg Trooper. They don't even have names. They're just called Trooper number 1337 or Major Alpha and such, although some of the higher ranked survivors get names, like Colonel Tybork, Hero of Vrax, both to underscore what expendable clones they are and because they don't give a flying fuck about anything other than marching, dying gloriously and shooting heretics in the head, fluff dependent. McNeil and Mitchell portray them as stoic to the point of being cold but still personal whereas Steve Lyons depicted them as machine-like and quiet, though still capable of anger and annoyance. As such gung-ho individuals they technically don't even have the need for commissars to maintain morale, since their deserting rate is practically zero and the officers, and probably even the regular troopers, will happily execute their soldiers themselves if need occurs. Commissars that are sent their way are usually sent in to say captain, I know you want to charge in and stab those orcs in the face with bayonets, but if you do that maybe 1 in 10 is getting out of there alive. The emperor needs you alive and we are going to goddamn wait until a situation comes where we can have enough survivors for the next battle and if you order a charge, it's blamming time for you. If a commissar is the voice of reason in your ear, you know your priorities are interesting. If one thing is even more serious business for Kriegers than dying, it's killing heretics with extreme prejudice, even by imperial standards. As mentioned in the Codex, Stronghold Assault, once there was a hive city that hadn't paid its tithe, and got a visit from the death corpse for it. After five years of constant bombardment, the city surrendered unconditionally, but the Kriegers wouldn't just stop bombarding over such a small thing. After three more years, there was nobody left alive in the ruins anymore. The death corpse still wouldn't leave until two years later, when they had eventually shot the entire mountain-sized hive to rubble. That seems unusually wasteful for Kriegers. Aren't hives supposed to be sacred architecture under themselves? Heretical hives are worth less than the dirt under a Krieger's boot. Comma that was also more about making a point about why surrendering early is the best option for you. Wait. Hive cities are protected by void shields capable of shrugging off orbital bombardment. Either the Kriegers had some huge toys or the humble Earthshaker isn't so humble. A surprising degree of bio and cybernetic enhancements also appear to be common among Kriegers, which while taking away from their raw awesomeness, should give you idea of how high the esteem in which the Imperium holds the death corpse. The Munitorium has a hard on for these guys because unlike guardsmen from other places they always obey orders to the letter, even especially when it means dying in droves. Most Kriegers never retreat, they almost fight to the death every time. Once when a commissar ordered a retreat, an unknown Krieger shot the commissar for cowardice. Seriously, these guys don't fuck around. The only thing that does happen once in a while that could be potentially seen as approaching a retreat is a regiment army being reassigned if the high ups conclude the objectives have been met or are simply no longer attainable and dying elsewhere serves the emperor better. That being said, during the siege of Vrax the Kriegers shot their own commissars who tried to stop their retreat. Despite being the most fanatical of the imperial guard, they are still only human. P. 72, Imperial Lama 5, Siege of Vrax Part 1, for all those who get a hard on for the death corpse. Now these suicidal, violent siege specialists are ordered to fight in the most dangerous battles. 
The death corpse of Krieg may want to die, but death is a bitch to them. When they do die though, they are easily replaced. Join the death corpse of Krieg now, Rebreatha, Laskin and No Will to Live included. Horses. Yes, they ride gas mask wearing horses into battle in the grim darkness of the 41st millennium. These are not any ordinary horses, though. Like space marines, they are gen hands with extra organs implanted to deal with harsh environments, giving them 6 plus invulnerable save, keep them fighting well after any ordinary filly would be blasted to the knackers. They are that grown and implanted with devices to increase aggression. These form the backbone of the Krieg Death Rider units, who are lead by a sergeant known as a Rider Master. They are used as scouts and to harass the enemy. In addition to last guns and grenades, they carry a one use only explosive tip lance, and can charge fleet of hoof if not shooting. Vitae Womb. It is stated that the Kriegers make use of Vitae Womb technology to keep up the annual crop of 50 million suicidally fanatical gas mask mooks specifically given to them by the Adeptus Mechanicus. What that means is a matter of debate, ranging from exams to drugs which increase fertility and accelerate pregnancy. What is not disputed is that it keeps population production up well beyond what can usually be achieved by human uteri, certainly ones inhabiting a radioactive hellscape. At least take comfort in the fact that it, in all likelihood, can't be as bad as a certain warsmith's pet project. Or could it? In all honesty it's almost certainly just an artificial womb. The basic technology itself is something that the Imperium makes use of on a regular basis and Vitae Womb is probably just a specific incarnation of it used to mass produce, biologically speaking, normal humans. There are no women in the Krieg military, because they also supply kids for their birth rates, they do both so they can recruit and tithe more regiments. Though it might just be cloning, with copious amounts of brainwashing to make sure the problems exhibited by normal clones don't manifest. Daily Rituals of Krieg Gordsman. 5 o'clock get up early. The Kriegers will rise from their dugout, foxhole bunker gun emplacement to start the day. 6 o'clock mandatory bed making the Krieg soilders spend the next hour making his bed so much he doesn't have time to rest. 7 o'clock give thanks to the Emperor. The Kriegers will give thanks to the Emperor. Fireworks are fired off daily, and usually out of a basilisk contra some heretics mustering point, to show how great he is. 8 o'clock breakfast time, breakfast is for the weak and non-creakers, however, rough riders will give their genetically engineered super horses a bag of oats and a nice apple before today's maneuvers begin. 9 o'clock morning bayonet charge, Kriegers will launch themselves at enemy positions today before commissars are even able to give the order. Shiny medals are given out for bravery much to the confusion of the average Krieger who doesn't know what a medal is. Or what it's for. 10 o'clock in trenching. Kriegers will fight die and dig trenches for the next hour or so or get shot while digging trenches or bash the local heretics face in with said entrenching tool. Those that do not have an entrenching tool can find one buried in the skull of a local heretic. 11 o'clock more entrenching. Kriegers love digging trenches so much they do it for another hour this time, a few feet closer to the enemy's position while getting shot at bulgy ants stabbed. 12 o'clock lunch time, Mechanicus issued faux soil and green cardboard tasting ration bars are issued to Kriegers. The Kriegers give thanks for this wondrous meal, which tastes like a wet sock. 1300 hours mandatory bed making, Kriegers spend the next hour making his bed. 1400 hours afternoon bayonet charge Kriegers will charge enemy positions most won't be making it back, those that do, please return the equipment to the local copper master so it can be reissued to other Kriegers. 1500 hours DV break, Kriegers will stop for an hour and put on famous Krieger gamma shells such as the price of a mill of the weakest link, in our fortifications, family fortunes Krieg edition which when your name is Alpha 62487 and these are my clone brethren is remarkably popular, hole in the wall, of guns, and total wipeout, much to a Krieger's disappointment I sent a show about 100% fatalities, also casualty Krieg edition is popular. 1600 hours give thanks to the Emperor again, Kriegers spend the next hour or so giving thanks to the Emperor for entrenching tools. Gas masks and that Mechanicus issued tin of beans they had last week. 1700 hours evening bayonet charge, 
those Kriegers that didn't die this afternoon will be given another opportunity to redeem themselves by charging through no man's land into the enemy's most fortified positing gun emplacement. 1800 hours evening ration and dinner, a larger more substantial meal of two ration bars is given to Kriegers those that complain about the taste of said ration bar shall be served an extra helping of death. 1900 hours Mechanicus issued cocaine break. Kriegers will take their Mechanicus issued performance enhancers which can be bought from the local corpse master and used for everything from teething for younger Kriegers to hunger suppressants. 2000 hours more bed making. The Kriegers unmake and remake their beds again to show how hardcore they are and disciplined. Those who got their arms blown off earlier by ordinance will try to make their beds with their teeth. 2100 hours last chance for suicidal charge. The Kriegers who didn't die in today's Sega meat grinder will be given another chance to die for the Emperor, as commissars and officers decide who's going to have the honor of this evening's kamikaze mission dozens put up their hands and yell out me 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 me. As if it was free money. 2200 hours. End of day. Those Kriegers who didn't die in today's kamikaze missions are now utterly depressed. The one guy in 500 who will try again tomorrow with another 500. Gazmask wearing madman. Better luck next time. 2300 hours. Home time. Kriegers will retire to their dugouts foxhole's bunkers trench. Others will pay a visit to their gene donors foxhole to ask for advice on being blown to smithereens by older wiser more experienced soilders, who will in turn ask the ranking officers, grandparents, on what is best to do in said situations. It's usually at this point when young Kriegers ask their gene donors for permission to go to a major bayon of charge this weekend at which point parents will say if you're going to fight in my bunker you charge by my rules. No bayon of charges after 8pm. 0 hundred hours quiet hour and idle time. Young Kriegers spend the next hour or so making their beds and or disassembling their lucifer pattern lasgans. Some Kriegers work up the courage to ask out other Kriegers if they'd like to share a ration bar in a newly bombed out hole made by artillery fire. Some Kriegers find this more intimidating than charging today's gun implacement. 1 o'clock bedtime. The Kriegers are ordered to go to bed by some very tired commissars. Kriegers obey and put younger Kriegers to sleep. While older Kriegers lock up their bunkers and give thanks for such a homey recruit bunker over their heads. No tabletop RPG is complete without beautiful models on the table and the best place to get models is from us. If you check the link below we have everything you could need for your magical realm. Only the finest of big titty wafers here. But if you're not into models or don't play with models we got you covered with subclasses such as the Gachimashi Wizards, the Simp Warlock and the North FC Fighter. Also we have started selling 5th edition adventures with our first one featuring Belle Delphine, the succubus that has poisoned the town's well and turned the villagers into simps. If any of that stuff sounds fun to you go ahead and check the link below but let's get back to the video. Vrax, and Forge World Stupidity. Now, for all that the soldiers of Krieg are supposed to be some of the hardest bastards in the Imperium and willing to sacrifice their lives in an instant if that's what is asked of them, there comes a point where going any further with that characterization crosses the line between grimly awesome and over the top caricature. There's really nothing wrong with this since 40k originally started out as a parody setting, just so long as the writers meet one simple condition. It has to be intentional. When Imperial Llama released their Vrax trilogy, it was supposed to be an example of how dark and gritty siege warfare could become, and therefore a textbook example of how the Death Corps operates. Prior to this, they were written as pragmatic, capable, dedicated, and utterly ruthless soldiers who combined the tactical sense you'd expect from a professional soldier who had been trained from birth with a willingness to sustain whatever amount of casualties are required to achieve their objectives on the battlefield, meeting their deaths without the slightest hesitation, and making sure that the Emperor's foes paid as high a price for those deaths as they could arrange. Instead, we were shown a teeming mass of soldiers who amounted to little better than Shambhala zombies with guns, utterly incompetent and suicidal to the point where they were more concerned with killing themselves than the enemies of the Imperium. The most sterling example of this has to be walking over minefields to clear them, something that could easily be accomplished with far less cost in men and material by using vehicles with dozer blades as mind rollers. 
they literally have to be convinced that there are better ways to fight the emperor's foes than marching into the teeth of enemy fire until they run out of ammunition by their damn commissars. Political officers whose entire job revolves around two things. 1. Inspiring soldiers through sheer hammy charisma. 2. Discouraging cowardice through the not insignificant accomplishment of successfully being more terrifying than any enemy a guardsman might be facing at the moment. In a universe where said enemies might be the legions of hell, an endless swarm of alien horrors from beyond the stars, a race of sentient bioweapons whose extreme bloodlust is matched only by their uncountable numbers or genetically engineered superhumans whose entire shtick revolves around being the most nightmarish motherfuckers in existence. The sheer wastefulness of the idiot corpse tactics is so great that it becomes impossible to take any of the books seriously, and the setting is left poorer for it. If the Death Corps actually fought like they're described in Vrax then in all likelihood the Imperium would have long since discarded them as a useful fighting force due to how needlessly and exorbitantly wasteful they are of lives and material, and we would like to remind you that the Imperium measures the casualties of war in planets, not men. Now to be fair, part of this characterization is likely caused by taking the cultural memory of World War 1. The idea of men mindlessly charging into machine gun emplacements across a no man's land ripped apart by artillery and chemical weapons, and porting it into 40k. Viewed this way much of the above makes sense. Death Corp tactics are wasteful because in popular memory that's all World War I was. Lions lead by donkeys who charged bravely if mindlessly into certain death. The problem comes when you try to get into the head of an entire culture whose goal is doing just that. This leads to the death corpse being stupid and fighting stupidly. In the end when Forge World tried to portray a World War 1 style mud and blood conflict, they fumbled because turning an already pretty grim dark conflict up to the 40k required 11 on the old grim dark dial was bound to push it into grim dark territory if handled poorly. And it was. TL. DR. In essence. The Vrax trilogy wanted to recreate the muddy hell holes of World War 1 in 40k, and in the process turned the Death Corps from something much like the Red Army during World War 2 into a poorly researched malicious portrayal of the Red Army during World War 2. Or a slightly better researched malicious portrayal of the Iranian Army during the Iran-Iraq War. Close bracket. Thankfully, they're generally portrayed in law usually as being unafraid of death but not willing to waste their lives so they can kill more of the Emperor's enemies. In fact, with their heavy tanks and numerous grenadiers and their engineers, the Death Corps seems more like a mashup of various real-life successful ways the trenches in World War II were ultimately defeated. Their machines and units imply the Death Corps is more of a line-breaking specialist's army than a dig trench and sit there forever army, with their trenches used more like forward bases and mustering points for their breaching attacks than as their main method of defeating the enemy. Facts Notes Due to the Krieger ideology of repentance to the Emperor, dying is considered the greatest honor for an average Krieger, and dying while achieving a great victory is a Krieger's wet dream. The Death Corps of Krieg's version of heaven or at the very least an equivalent concept, is to achieve a great victory for the Imperium while sustaining 100% casualties. They would be the perfect soldier for the Normandy landings or Stalingrad. They will attempt to achieve a glorious victory while drowning the enemy with their corpses. The death corpse of Krieg kill. They seriously do not fuck around. They have cuirassiers that ride horses with fucking rebreathers. Yep. The Lasgan model they use is called the Lucius Patton O. 98. In keeping with their German World War I inspiration, the standard issue Mauser rifle was the model 1898. More powerful per shot than most Lasgans, but it might blow up if you fire it too quickly. The death corps of Krieg resemble old World War I soldiers, with most people thinking they are German because of their name and the Stahlhelm style helmets. However, the overall design of the corpse is actually a mix between various armies from World War I and even the 19th century. The helmet is a Stahlhelm Adrian hybrid. The uniform is mostly French. The gas mask looks like British American models. The grenadiers armor plates are undoubtedly German and the death riders and officers are French cuirassiers from the Napoleonic Wars with the same World War I flavor. Meanwhile their tanks, while the same Russes as everyone else in the guard, have the trench rails of World War II French tanks. 
I bet they allow the use of hardcore cocaine. And they won't take it because it doesn't help in killing heretics or dying fast enough. They have cool looking grenadiers for, well, grenadiering? They don't desert, ever, they're not all that into sweet things anyway. They're German, French, British, American, so of course they're gonna win, after taking a stupidly high amount of casualties. Kill confirmed is the only thing they ever say in combat ever. They don't fly aerial vehicles, they just crash them into enemy AA guns. 50 stroke 50 chance of them still surviving. They fly CAS and bomber aircraft into the most suicidal of missions, and once irreparably damaged, suicide bomb them into enemy AA to clear the way for other air units. Krieger pickup lines are notoriously bad, so bad they make the Mechanicus look like Barry White. Notable lines include contributing to a cloning vat of fetuses with you would be an appropriate use of our genetic material, corporal. Share this additional synthesized mechanicus issued ration bar with me at 1600 hours. Would you like to go for some rakath with me? I used water from a shell hole and it was warm 3 hours ago. So far so good. I have fixed my bayonet. I shall now char our arge. You. I found this bombed out foxhole near our position. It's an acceptable location to swap reproductive fluid. And my gene donors are away on a suicidal bayonet charge this weekend. I've got the whole barracks to myself, and I just picked up a mixet of the most rousing Krieg anthems. Hint, apart from Nazi type marches, it sounds like Lasgans firing, orders being yelled, screams of the wounded, explosions, and marching boots. Super romantic. Rejection in Krieg is common, because most Kriegers are male, look like each other and fucking in the Emperor's service on Krieg is not only blasphemous. It will likely result in your willy melting off from radiation sickness. Common excuses include I'm washing my bald, scarred, irradiated scalp. I'd love to but I have a tyrannid invasion to stop. The offer is tempting. But I've just been ordered to charge that dugout. Gonna be busy all day. I can't go to the military parade with you. I'm dying for the emperor tomorrow. And I like you as a squad mate. You're like a brother in arms to me. If Krieg and Cardia swapped places Abaddon would have stayed in the Eye of Terror, but the Imperial casualties would have increased by an order of magnitude. A romantic evening to a Krieger usually involves barbed wire, grey dugout positions, lang mines, a searchlight, filthy latrines, an emplaced heavy machine gun, trench foot, and some sensual stick bombs. Their response to Necron's fucking vaporizing them is to continue firing but also make sure to drop their weapon when they are hit so as to preserve as much of their equipment as possible. Kill or be killed, either way, Krieg is redeemed. One millimeter at a time. Or, they will redeemed. Once the pencil pushers of the administratum and munitorum decide they are redeemed. A Krieg death corps trooper and a Katachan jungle fighter got into a fight to see who was the most baddest type of guardsman ever. Except no they didn't because a true Krieger always has more important shit to get done. That and a true Katachin is too busy wrestling jungle scorpions to go fight a doormat. They are highly popular with the commissariat as they do not retreat. They hold the line. Fans do their heavy World War 1 inspiration one better by portraying them as being highly eager to use sharpened entrenching tools shovels in close combat, though this has technically never really appeared in canon. The use of shovels in melee, that is. Their suicidal eagerness to get into melee is definitely cannon as shit. Will kill their commander if they are ordered to retreat more than a few times. Unless they have a reason, that is they never have a reason to retreat, Ave Imperator. Apostrophe. Jokes aside, even the one time they broke was against literally the single worst batch of chemical weapons in Warhammer history, which is really saying something, on Vrax by the The Purge. It literally took a rolling blackout of super heavy tank melting gas fired by the single most life hating unit of beings to ever exist to drive them off. By one trench line exactly. And even then they weren't so much driven off as melted where they stood. Comma even then, this isn't really breaking. They are strategically repositioning so they can die for the emperor in a more useful way than being turned into poisonous slag. They look down on other regiments that aren't as suicidally fanatical and or disciplined as they are, 
Because of this they get along with the Mordian Iron Guard as they also share their fatalistic devotion to duty, and absolutely despise the Jock or Indentured Guard as they are the complete opposite of what the corpse believes a soldier should be. However, they also openly praise Japalian marksmanship. Did I mention that the greatest victory for a Krieger unit involves 100% casualties? Trivia. The death corps are very clearly based off of German, French, British, and American World War I soldiers, all the way down to their trench coats, French, gas masks, British German, helmets, French German hybrid, their riders, French, love of big guns, American German, and of course, affinity for trench warfare. Just like the good old Somme Praman Verdun Passion Deal, eh? They also seem to be much more heavily focused on the machines, tactics, and special units that ultimately overcame trench warfare. Such as focused artillery barrages to cover for a large number of very heavily armored soldiers to get close and seize trenches and then be reinforced by normal troops. Tanks, lots and lots of tanks especially really damn huge ones, and so on. Which makes sense, they are sent to win wars not stagnate them. Modeling options. As the most popular, fluff-wise, regiment, Forge World has models for them that cost more than the average Kriegsman's life, but then again that's not really a high bar. Thankfully, Anvil Industry comes to the rescue with their regiment's range, allowing anyone to build very authentic looking Kriegers, complete with their signature death masks, unique lasguns and wield heavy weapons. Really worth looking at the Leg Rognard set in German World War 1 set from War Games Atlantic for cheap alternatives. 4 more on them look here. 1. If you are really wanting those FW style models, but you don't want to sell your kidneys then certain Slavic and Asian countries will have you covered in the recast black market. For the correct amount of vodka and rice of course. Finally, as of July 2021. Plastic multipart Krieg models have been confirmed to be releasing in the not too distant future by the Warhammer community team. Meaning that soon you'll be able to get your Krieg guardsmen without having to sell your organs to Forgy World. Because you'll be selling them to GW directly, that is. Still, the suffering's over. Recent leaks have which were 90% suggest more Imperial Guard is coming with their codex in 2022. It's speculated we are going to have Cadence. Catchins, and Kriegers as the main frontliners of the Codex. Well guys hope you enjoy today's video. We are going to assume you have if you have stayed to the end. Consider subscribing and clicking the notification bell if you really enjoyed it to stay up to speed with any and all new videos. Also check out the links below to our shop for some fat ass titties and our sponsor Rural and be sure to use a promo code at checkout so they know we sent you and you'll get 10% off. And until next time. All those moments of loss in time.